Good morning. Welcome to Guest Baptist Church this morning. Good to see everybody. Got a few announcements need to make special mention of. First, um, Brother John will be preaching revival at Poplar Springs Baptist Church starting tonight through Wednesday. Uh, service tonight will be canceled here so that we can join Brother John in service at Poplar Springs. That is at Poplar Springs Baptist Church in Bryant. We will be leaving here at 4 p.m. sharp. The uh, service starts at 5. Uh, Monday through Wednesday now, the service will be at 6.15, so make sure you check those times. And that is correct. It's at 6.15, Monday through Wednesday, 5 p.m. tonight. So no service here tonight. Uh, John, service Wednesday over there? Okay, so Wednesday, we will still have service here on Wednesday. But no service tonight, moving it to Poplar Springs and Bryant, and that is at 5 o'clock, leaving here at 4. Next Sunday is our Youth Sunday. Be in prayer for that. Two Sundays from today, we have Brotherhood Breakfast at 7 o'clock. Cooking at 7, eat at 8. Brother Roger Little will be with us. Uh, and then Monday the 7th, that is two Mondays from tomorrow, we will have in-depth Bible study. Study, excuse me. Um, and then we want to continue to thank everybody that's been cleaning the church. I'd like to thank John and Karen for, uh, for doing that this week. Are there any other announcements that need to be made special mention of this morning? Okay. Uh, the youth will be singing at um, the Tabernacle in Pisgah on Tuesday night. Um, so if you're not able to make it to John's Revival Tuesday, we will be going to the Tabernacle in Pisgah Tuesday also. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you so much.
have each of you this morning. If, if you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. Uh, would there be any prayer requests before we go further in the service? Anybody else?
walk a bit different now, now that my heart's been found. Nothing really feels the same. I hold my head a bit higher, I lift my voice a bit louder. Yeah, something inside has changed. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. Cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier. Cause I've been re I know this is not my home, I know I don't walk alone, no matter what comes my way. I have peace through the trouble, I have joy through the struggle, now my hope's in a brighter day. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer, cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier, cause I've been redeemed. I am a child of the Father, an orphan no longer, no doubt about who I am. I'm in the hands of the healer, the arms of the Savior. His grace makes me who I am. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer, cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier, cause I've been redeemed. Listen to this song and have a lot of people here from church actually that text me and ask me to pray for them. And there's nothing I can do but pray for them, but I know a man that can help them, and that's who I'm praying to. And you know, we all go through struggles, and I know that sometimes it's a Sometimes it hurts real bad. And, and <laughs> you know, we still, though, we, do, we just try to show our good faith, faith and, and let people see us with a smile on their face and everything. But this song just touched me there because sometimes at home, you know, we kind of we let it out. The song's called Sometimes I Cry. I look the part, blending with the rest of the church crowd. I know the routine, make a list of the Bible studies in town. It's Christian TV, I know all the preachers, their cliches. I've been born again, and without a doubt, I know them see. Sometimes I hurt, sometimes. 
sometimes I cry Sometimes I can't get it right No matter how hard I seem to try Sometimes I fall down I stumble over my own disguise I try to look strong As the whole world looks on Sometimes alone I cry I try to speak faith Never give the devil one inch to get in I do worship and praise Let everybody know just where they stand On the back of my ride It's a cross and a cross for the world to see I know God is good all of the time Yes, there's no doubt for me But sometimes I hurt Sometimes I cry Sometimes I can't get it right no matter how hard I seem to try Sometimes I fall down I stumble over my own disguise I try to look strong As the whole world looks on Sometimes alone I cry Sometimes I hurt, sometimes I cry, sometimes I can't get it right, no matter how hard I seem to try, sometimes I fall down, I stumble over my own disguise, I try to look strong, as the whole world looks on, but sometimes alone I cry. Try to look strong, cause the whole world looks on, but sometimes alone I
touched this morning. Second Timothy. The book of Second Timothy. Woo, I'm loud. Second Timothy. Uh, we're going to begin reading there in uh, chapter 1 uh, and verse 1. Again, we're going uh, expectations part number 2. This is what God expects out of us. And, uh, and I'm going to just forewarn you before I, before I go any farther. Keep your Bibles open this morning because you're, we're going to go back and we're going to go back and we're going to go back. We're going to tear apart the first chapter, the first 14 verses of the book of 2 Timothy this morning uh, and, and point out the expectations because they are listed uh, throughout these first 14 verses. If, you're, if you found your place, I'm going to ask you if you would to rise for the reverence of the reading of God's holy, infallible word. Uh, and uh, y'all pray for us this morning as we try to preach. Second uh, Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and then thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Y'all, let's read verse number 7 again. For God hath not given us uh, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not there, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light uh, through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and per am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and the love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, Lord, we thank you and praise you, God, for your holy touch. God, we want to thank you this morning uh, for reaching down from on high and then touching unworthy sinners such as we are. But Father, this morning, God, as we, uh, as we prepare to preach, God, get me out of your way. Lord, make me nothing more than your mouthpiece in this place. Father, I pray this morning in Jesus' name that not a 
uh, any spirit, but the Holy Spirit be allowed to operate in this room this morning. Father God, I pray, Lord, uh, that you'll give us ears to listen, hearts to obey your word this morning. And Father God, as we dive into the expectations uh, that you have of us, God, let us be uh, found fighting and found faithful to be uh, to try and uh, to live up to those expectations. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. The first expectation that I want to cover, and like I said, keep your Bible open uh, to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 this morning, if you will, uh, because I took uh, uh, and, and had to highlight these things in my Bible because these points uh, intercross, they're interwoven throughout these first uh, 14 verses uh, this morning. And I understand uh, that this is the apostolic greeting that, that, that uh, Paul is greeting Timothy. But in this greeting that word, uh, Paul writes these words to Timothy, I believe uh, that we see three expectations for us, not just for the life of Timothy, but to the life of the Christian living in the month of September in the year 2019. I believe that this is a word uh, for somebody that's sitting here this morning. Uh, so I'm going to ask you for your full undivided attention as we tear this chapter apart. The, the first uh, point this morning, uh, uh, the, the first expectation uh, that I believe that God is looking for uh, in the day in which we live is this. It is a surrender. Uh, I believe that God is searching uh, throughout uh, Sand Mountain, uh, throughout the churches that are, loaded, uh, are located in this place, for somebody that will surrender. I, I believe that in verse 1, uh, we see something uh, here that is, that is vital for our understanding. First of all, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It's by the will of God. Uh, see, this morning, uh, so often times we uh, begin to think about what we want to do for the kingdom of God and we forget about God's will for our lives. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, we need to surrender uh, to the will of God for our lives. Church, Amen. listen to what I'm telling to you this morning. Uh, it is high time that the church of God surrenders to the will of God. It is high time that we quit telling God uh, what we're going to do and the way we're going to act and the way we're going to serve and we surrender uh, to what God has for us to do. Amen. A surrender is an expectation that God has for us. Paul said it wasn't by Paul's will, but it was by God's will uh, that he was an apostle of Jesus Christ. Look on down in verse number 2 there. It says, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to tell you this morning and I'm going to submit to you uh, that the only way you're going to find grace, mercy, and peace all at the same time is to be surrendered to the will of God. I'm going to say that again because hey, somebody didn't get it this morning. The only way you're going to find grace, mercy, and peace all at the same time is to be surrendered to the will of God. Amen. That's the only way you're going to find it. Uh, you say, Brother John, I, I thought that, uh, uh, that, that we can find mercy uh, in, 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 the, in our time of need. And, and mercy is something, it's where you don't get what you do deserve. And, uh, and, and, and listen to me, church, if we uh, got down to the bare bones about it, if, if we just begin to search our lives, you know what we deserve? Death. Scripture says the wages of sin is death. So we are all sinners, and therefore we all deserve death. So mercy has found its way into our lives. But listen to, listen to what I'm going to say to you. Once you've found Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, once you have uh, 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 submitted unto Him uh, for salvation, uh, do you know that He continually forgives us? Amen. 
Scripture says, 1 John 1, 9, it says if we, uh, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So mercy is, getting, uh, what, is not getting what we do deserve because if we do deserve it, it's dead. Grace is getting what we don't deserve, and these are blessings from on high. And, and, and now listen to what I'm going to say to you this morning, because uh, we all live, and we're, we're living in a grace-filled nation, in a blessed nation. Uh, we're blessed people in a blessed nation. We, we've got mercy. And you say, well, Brother John, I thought you said you couldn't get all three at the same time. I, I, listen to what I'm going to tell you. You might be living in God's blessings, Come on. but you ain't got peace. You might have the mercy of God, but you don't got the peace of God. You say, Brother John, how do you get all that surrender? Amen. Surrender to the will of God is the only way you're going to get grace, mercy, and peace all at the same time. It is only by surrender. Otherwise, that last one, that peace, you're never going to have it. Listen, church, we live in such a time and in such a day where we're concerned about things. We're, uh, we're, 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 we're looking right now. We may, y'all, and, and I'm not trying to be some kind of prophet up here, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you turn on the news of today and you look at what's happening in Iran. You look at what's taking place in Saudi Arabia. You look over there at what's taking place in, in Syria and in Israel. We could be in war before I get done with this morning's message. Oh, but I'm going to tell you something. I, I've been surrendered to the will of God, so I'm telling you I've got peace with God, and I know that God knows what's going to take place. I'm not worried about next year's election. I'm not worried about who sits in car. Congress. I'm not worried about the investigations that take place. You know why? Because I am, I am worth working and surrendered to a sovereign Savior this morning that's got all things in His hands. I'm telling you this morning, uh, there's folks that walk around in the church of today and they think, man, if we don't do, if we don't elect the right people, uh, uh, America's going to fall. I'm going to tell you something. That's exactly right. But I'm not worried about it this morning. I'm not one bit concerned about it this morning uh, because even though I'm an American, I'm a Christian first and, and, and I've got a city that's not built by hands. Amen. I've got a city beyond this world. I'm not worried much about what's going to take place in this world. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? That is peace. That is grace, mercy, and peace all dwelling together in the same place because of a surrender to the will of God. A surrender. That is what God expects out of his people. Yes. A surrender. He doesn't want you to be concerned. And y'all listen to what I'm telling you this morning. When you've got health problems, God wants you to surrender that too. Yes. When you've got issues financially, God wants you to surrender that too. Otherwise, you don't have peace. Amen. I've got, I've got to move. I've got to move. The first thing that God expects out of us is a surrender. In verse 3, look at verse 3, the, the center part. He says, I thank God whom I serve. Whom I serve. <laughs> now this morning, I want you to understand <clears throat> that if you're surrendered to the will of God, you're going to be a servant. I got two. If you're surrendered to the will of God, you're going to be a servant. There is no possible way that anybody can look you square in the eye and say, I'm surrendered to the will of God, and here's what I do. No, church. No. Come on. 
There's more to the Christian walk than sitting in a pew on a Sunday morning. I'm telling you there's more to a Christian walk than knowing Christian songs. I'm telling you this morning uh, there's more to being a surrendered, sold out uh, Christian this morning uh, than to come into church and be faithful to, to tithe. There's more to it than that. And I'm telling you this morning if we just get surrendered to the will of God we'd begin to start to serve God. Paul said, I'm surrendered and I've got grace, mercy, and peace. I've got all of these dwelling together in the same place because I'm surrendered. I'm not surrendered to Paul's will. I'm surrendered to God's will. And because I'm surrendered to God's will and not Paul's will, I am therefore a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you take apart those first three verses, you could preach all day long about uh, the service that's in there. But why in this world do we have to beg folk to work in church? Amen. Amen. It ought to be your heart to get up and get busy and be in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it, you ought to be excited if you got a toilet to clean. You ought to be excited if you got a vacuum to turn on. You ought to be excited if you get to wipe down the windows or change the signs. I'm telling you, you ought to be overly excited if, if somebody uh, uh, allows you to teach a Sunday school class. You ought to be overly excited uh, to get to, uh, 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 to to share your faith outside the walls of this church. I'm telling you, church, there's more to it than sitting on a pew. And if you're surrendered to the will of God, you're going to be a servant for yeah, God. Amen. 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 You say, Brother John, I just don't know what I could do. You come to me, I got a list. Amen. 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 Approach a deacon, I've got a list. A half a mile long uh, that the uh, positions that need to be filled, folks, that we need volunteers for. And I'm telling you this morning, it's God's expectation for us to be surrendered, and that means in service. Amen. All right, go on. I, I've got to. I've got to hurry this morning. Uh, look down at verse eight with me. It, it, it says, be, "Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, His prisoner." Paul says to Timothy. He said, I'm his prisoner. Do you know what a prisoner does? They're in submission to whoever is holding them captive. All right, so there's a service about being surrendered, but there's also a submission about being surrendered. It's to be in submission to whoever's holding them captive. Paul, right, he says to Timothy, I'm the, the prisoner of Christ. I'm the prisoner of the Lord. You say, Brother John, I thought uh, uh, that, that he set us free. He did. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He, he did set us free. But he set us free to be in submission to him. If we're not in submission to Him, you know you're in submission to something else. Come on, man. You say, Brother John, I don't, I don't agree with that. I just do my own thing. I do it my own way. You know who you're in submission to? Your own will. You're not in submission to God's will. You're in submission to self. But Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Christ. He says, I'm in submission to my to the one that is holding me captive. And you say, Brother John, I, I don't I don't like that terminology of, of, of Christ being held holding us captive and us being his prisoner. Let me tell you something. I, I, I'd rather not be anybody else's prisoner but his. Amen. I don't want to be in submission to my own will. I don't want to be in submission to Satan's will for my life. I want to be in submission to God's will for my life because he saved me. Amen. 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 He saved me to be a servant and a submissive servant to him. Yeah. In subjection unto him. And this morning, you're being held captive by something. Amen. And on. if it's not Christ, you're not living a surrendered life. Amen. All right, look on with me, verse 9. It says, Who hath saved us 
and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. And I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to tell you this. And I want you to understand this. Paul is writing this to Timothy. He said, he saved us and he's called us. He saved us and he's called us. And your, your spiritual gift is not being called to just sitting on a pew. He saved us and he called us. He says not according to our works. Not, not because we could do something for the kingdom. Not because uh, we, could, uh, uh, we could bring a special spark to the kingdom. He said, but it was according to his purpose. Do you know, I want you to understand what, what I'm saying to you this morning. That if Christ has saved you, he has called you with a purpose. Amen. He's called you with a purpose. That means something that is greater than you. He's called you for that purpose. Folks, listen. And there may be somebody sitting in here that may have said this to me. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to poke you out or point you out. I'm just telling you how silly this is. Folks will say, well, I know God's got something, something for me to do. I just don't know what it is. You better be seeking. Yes. You better be searching. Because if you're not, it's, you're, what's going to happen is, is years is going to pass by your life and you're never going to do nothing for the kingdom of God to amount to a hill of beans. And you say, Brother John, that's awful harsh preaching. I'm telling you, church, this morning it's about being surrendered to Him. And if you're truly surrendered to Him, He'll show you where you can be in service. He'll show you what your calling is. He'll point that out to you because it's not because it's what you're good at. It's because it's according to His purpose. Amen. He has placed each one of you. It says right there, He's called us according to His purpose in Christ Jesus before the world began. Do you know, do you understand what the implications of that verse is? That means when he saved you, he already knew what his perfect will for your life was. I'll take it one step farther. Before you were ever born, he knew what his perfect will for your life was. And his perfect will for your life, it may be on a mission field in Africa. It may be on the mission field at Fife School. His perfect will for your life, God's already got it. And I, you say, Brother John, you, you're, you're preaching uh, to a bunch of folk, and I know, I know they're, they're y'all, y'all good people. I get that. I love y'all. But I'm telling you that there's those that in, in, in this church house that is not surrendered to him because they'll say to me, I know he saved me for a purpose, but I just don't know what my purpose is. He does. Because he wrote it down before in the eons of the past. Before you was ever thought of, before you was ever saved, before you was ever born, he said he had a perfect will for you and a calling on your life before any of this ever happened. And if you say, Brother John, I just don't know what it is, you, I don't either, but you seek the one that does know. You seek from him knowledge. It says, if any man lack wisdom, book of James, let him ask of God, and God will, give, uh, will divide unto him as he gives us to all men liberally. He'll pour it out on you. The wisdom of God. You know why we ain't got wisdom? Because we don't ask for it. Well, that's the reason. I, I, I tell you, this morning, I, I want you to understand uh, that I love you and I, and I want you to, to understand that, that Christ has, has called you to something 
in your life, it may be a preacher. It may be a Sunday school teacher. It could possibly be to sing specials in the church. Uh, it, may, it may even be uh, to pass out tracts. It may be uh, uh, to, to go to somebody and be a one-on-one -on -one witness. It, it may be uh, uh, to just live in a, the, the Christian life in this dark world and be in a prayer warrior. But I can promise you he didn't just call you to sit on a pew somewhere and, and look pretty on a Sunday morning. Amen. Come on now. But look on verse 11. It says whereunto I am appointed. I am appointed. He, he goes on, he said, a preacher, an apostle, a teacher uh, to the Gentiles. He, Paul was appointed. Do you know what you, you get every time in Scripture? And y'all can look me up. But every time in Scripture, before somebody gets appointed to an office, they first get anointed for the office. If Christ has called you to something, He's gave you the anointing for something. And the reason that a lot of folk are not serving in the appointment that they've got is because they don't realize they've got the anointment. Now that, y'all, I'm telling you, God has not only called you to it, He has anointed you for it, and He wants to appoint you to it. I'm going to say this. And I don't want you to get upset at me, but I'm preaching a whole lot better than y'all are acting. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you this morning, God has called y'all for a purpose. For a purpose. He has anointed you, and then he wants to appoint you to that purpose. But in order to be Appointed, first of all, you've got to sacrifice some things. So you've got, you've got service, you've got submission, and then you've got sacrifice. You say, Brother John, what if, what if, what's got to be sacrificed? Your own will. What's got to be sacrificed in order to live a sold out and surrendered life, which is what God expects, what's got to be sacrificed? Your self-will. What you want. What you desire. Because I'm going to just tell you something. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put her out there just as frank as I know how. Because that's the only way I know how to be. But listen. If you, if you think, well, Brother John, he's got it all figured out. Look at him. He's the preacher. He's the pastor. He's the this and he's the that. You wrong, baby. You wrong. But I'm going to tell you something. They ain't nothing in me wanted to preach God's word. I'm telling you nothing. I run as fast and as hard as I could run. I did not want to preach God's word. I wanted to tell God everything that I would do for him. Uh, but one day, uh, one day at Mountain View Baptist Church, I had to surrender uh, to the call to preach. I had to surrender. And I want you to tell I want to tell you. I'm just going to uh, just backtrack for just a minute and just tell you all about it. Uh, because I was sitting in Mountain View Baptist Church. Our song director had had to have heart surgery, so he was out. I, I I was a trustee. I was leading the youth. I, 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 I was uh, uh, active on Wednesday nights. I was all of these things. And I was the fill-in song director. Hear what I'm saying to you tonight uh, or this morning? Uh, that night at Mountain View Baptist Church, I was filling in as the song director. Uh, the Lord had been dealing with me. I'm just going to tell you the God's honest truth. Most of y'all don't even know uh, most of the time. If I asked you at the back door what did I preach on, you'll say, well, I don't know uh, if you're being honest. But anyway, you might make up something and you might hit the nail on the head. I don't know. Uh, but that Sunday night uh, at Mountain View Baptist Church, I ain't got a clue. I'm talking about not a clue of what Brother Brian was preaching on. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit was on my shoulder and in my head and in my heart trying his best uh, to get out of me. And he said, son, I want you to preach my word. He'd been dealing with me for three or four weeks. Son, I want you to preach my word. Son, I want you to surrender to my call. I want you, I've got an anointing on your life. I want to give you an appointment. And I said, no, God, no, God, no, God. 
And I started, I was sitting there on that pew and I was telling God everything that I was doing. I said, God, I tithe. God, I'm here on Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Uh, God, I'm over the youth. God, I'm a trustee at this church. God, I, I do this and I do this and I do this for you. And God said to me, I don't care. I want you to preach my word. And I said, Lord, I do not want to preach your word. I was sitting there, my heart about to beat out of my chest. Brother Brian called for an altar call. Well, like I said, I was the song leader. I just jumped up, grabbed open my, my, my book, and I said, we're going to sing this song. And would you believe that we were singing, All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. And about right there, I thought, boy, you've got me. <laughs> and I said, I said, all right, Lord, all right, all right, all right, all right. I was up there, I was making deals. I said, I'm having a lead singing today. I, I'll surrender next Sunday. I, I, I started, I mean, I, I was trying to make every back room deal that there was. I said, I'll surrender next Sunday. I, I will surrender next Sunday. But right now, I, Lord, I ain't never, I've never in my life, I've been in church my whole life. Since nine months before I was born, I've never seen a song leader throw his book down and go to the altar. I've just never seen that. And God, we just can't do that because I've never seen it. And, and that just can't be done in a Baptist church, God. God, I'll surrender next Sunday. And I'm going to tell you what God told me. He said, son, you'll surrender tonight or I'm going to quit asking. Midway through that second verse, I throwed my book down on the front row of that church and I hit that altar. And I surrendered to the Lord calling me to preach. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't understand it then, and I sure don't understand it now. Of why in this world, I told God I can't talk good. I've been made fun of for the way that I talk my whole life. I can't talk good. And God said, I want you. I do not, I do not understand, but I know this, that God anointed me for it. I just had to surrender to it. Amen. And once I surrendered to it, he gave me the appointment. And I was, I'm telling you, as, as serious as I know how to be this morning, nothing in me wanted to preach. Nothing in me wanted to, wanted to, to do God's work in that area. But then once I surrendered, Brother Gerald, <laughs> I'd rather preach as eat. Amen. And I like to eat, but I'd rather preach. Amen. I'd rather preach as do anything in this world that I know of. Why? Because right there, it's, it's there that I'm surrendered. It's there that I'm fulfilling the appointment that I've been anointed for. It's there whenever I, I get to lift up my hands to Jesus and say, look, God, use me. Use me. The first thing that God expects out of us is to be surrendered. A surrendered life will always include service, sacrifice, and submission. These three are the hallmarks or the landmarks that God expects in the lives of a surrendered Christian. And this morning, I'm not telling you that God's calling you to preach. I don't know what God's calling you for. But it's for service. Yes. Secondly, the second expectation. And I'm going to hurry, I promise. I just looked at my watch. Y'all don't look at yours. <laughs> the second expectation that God has for us is to be sound. Sound. Verse 1, it says, according to the promise uh, of life which is in Christ Jesus. 
God has promised us some things in His Word. And that what is what Paul is telling to Timothy is stay in the book, boy. Yeah. Stay in the book. Stay sound. Stay with what God has promised you. All right, so a soundness uh, is what God expects. In verse 5, it says, an unfeigned faith uh, that is in thee. Uh, a soundness. Uh, unfeigned means genuine. It means not a fake. Church, listen to me. There are so many fake Christians that are walking up and down uh, in our world of today. They're, they're sitting in church pews all across this nation, all across Sand Mountain, and they're just as fake as a fake $20 bill. And, and, and they are about, they, but they look the part, they act the part, but they're fake. And I'm telling you uh, that if the Bible says to be sound, to be unfeigned, to be genuine, to be not fake. That in, order, in other words, not to be fake is to be real. Amen. 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 Real. I'm telling you, I think our world has enough fake Christianity, don't you? I think that our, our, our church has experienced enough uh, of fake Christianity and fake Christians that, uh, that are tossed with, to and fro with every wind of doctrine. I'm telling you, uh, Scripture uh, uh, and God expects us to be sound in the Scripture. Uh, he expects us to be studying the Scripture. He expects us to know what the Bible says. I, I'm telling you, there's so many folks out there in, in today's world that'll listen to what a preacher says and they'll they'll base their whole religion uh, on what a preacher says. I'm telling you that I am a preacher and I would never dare lead you wrong on purpose but you better check me. Amen. It's up to you to check me. I wouldn't lead you wrong on purpose but I might s uh, slip something might slip out of my tongue the wrong way. I, at one point I said one time that there are 67 books in the Bible and somebody asked me after church he said when they write the other one and I said what are you talking about? He said you said there's 67 books in the Bible. I said well I just misspoke. They 66 by the way. <laughs> but you listen you be sound. You need to know these things in and of yourself. You Look on with me. He says in verse 6, it says, uh, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. It, remembrance of what? Remembrance of what the Scripture says. Remembrance of the gift that's inside of you. I'm telling you, church, this morning, if we ever needed to be reminded uh, that we've been called that day and that hour is today in this hour, uh, that we have been called together uh, for a purpose, and it's more than sitting inside of a church building on Sunday. It's more than putting money in the offering plate on Sunday. And, and you, you need to understand it, but you You've got to be sound in it. You need to be reminded of the scripture. Uh, that is why we come to church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Boy, I about preached myself to a headache. We are, I'm telling you this morning, we need to be sound. And, and you say, Brother John, uh, I, I don't, I just, I, I'm not going to be involved in any in depth Bible study because that'd be just way over my head. I, I'm not going to be involved in any Sunday school class because that's just way over my head. They say, Brother John, I, I don't want to come on Wednesday night because I'm afraid that'll just be over my head. I'm telling you, every time, every opportunity that you have, you ought to be sitting under the gospel. You ought to be sitting under uh, sound doctrine uh, because you need to be reminded about what the Scripture says. You need to be studying in and of yourself and on your own. You know, let me tell you what I hear whenever people say, well, I'm just not going to be involved in that. That means to tell me that you know all that there is to know about this book and, and that we need to be having you to teach us. A soundness, a soundness. And therefore, in, in, verse, uh, in verse number 7, he says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Do you know, listen to what I'm going to tell you this morning, that God has called you for His purpose, and if you'll live a surrendered life, and in soundness of doctrine, that God has given you everything you need to accomplish the work that He's put before you. He said He didn't give you the spirit of fear. 
He gave you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You say, Brother John, why? why I, I just I want to go here right, right quick, all right? And I, and I know I'm, I'm getting on some of his nerves a little bit, and that's all right, though. I, I do that from time to time. But anyway, he says, thank you, David, uh, from love. <laughs> do you know, I, I'm telling you, they are folks in this world that is so hard to love. You hear what I'm saying to you? There's some folks in this world. I'm telling you, I, I, there's a lot more folk. Listen, I'm saying this in love and through the heart of love, but there's a lot of folk that I'd rather see going as I had coming. Amen? You say, Brother John, how can you say that? <laughs> well, if you're not being self-righteous, you, you, you're thinking the same thing. <laughs> Amen? You thinking, man, there's some folk that I like to see go. How do you love them people? It's because of him. Being sound in the faith, being sound in the doctrine, being sound in this word. It, you know what? It says, uh, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Well, how's that even possible? He gave us the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit. He has allowed us to do things that we cannot do on our own. Amen. 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 He's gave y'all the ability to love me. <laughs> as hard as that is sometimes. Amen. Amen. I'm going back and I'm watching the film. See who amen that last time. <laughs> Verse 12. Paul says this, and remember, a soundness in the faith, a soundness. Yes. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. He talks about in verse 1 the promises. And then he says, I understand that the one that promised me is faithful. I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have placed my trust. And, and y'all church, listen to me today. If there was ever a time that we needed to be sound in the faith and we needed to understand that we serve a sovereign Savior, that hour, that day is today, uh, is understanding uh, that a soundness in the faith and that we have believed in one that promised us that he's working everything together for our good uh, because we loved him yeah. and because we are called together according to his purpose. Even though we may not see the good in it right now, God is working all things together for our good. I'm yeah. telling you, church, this morning, if we ever grab hold and, and we ever understand uh, that living a surrendered life is, is living a sound life in Christ, if we ever understand that, uh, that we've placed our trust in the sovereign hands of God and that God loves us and would not do any thing to harm us, uh, but he does everything for our good. If we understand that, you know how much less we'd worry? How much less we would uh, 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 get our, our... I can't say that. Come on, man. How much less we'd get our underwear in a wad? over things and say I'm trusting in a sovereign God and he's got his hands on me a soundness a soundness and, and solid and that, that word sound means solid in the faith solid in the doctrine solid in what the Bible says soundness is hard to find in today's world it's hard to find in today's Christian world. Why? Because we uh, here, here's what we've got. We've got a hymnology. We believe in the hymns, but not in the words of him. We'll take what, what's said in a Christian song, we'll take a lyric out of it, and we'll say, well, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. They wouldn't have written the song like that. Y'all, you better look, check that with Scripture. Because there's a lot of hymns that we sing. <laughs> Ain't scripture. Right. You say, Brother John, which one? I'm just going to nail one right now this morning, all right? Since I've done made some of you mad, I'll just make some of you a little Come bit on, more man. mad. But the song, Oh, What a Savior, it says they search through heaven 
They didn't have to search through heaven, baby. It was, it was foreordained before the foundation of the world that Christ would come. They didn't have to search for him through heaven. Amen? That's just one example. You can see me after church if, if you want some more. Verse 13, it says, hold fast to the form of sound words. He said there's something that you need to hang on to. Hang on to this book. I'm telling you that, that preachers may lead you wrong, that Sunday school teachers may lead you wrong, but I'm telling you this book will never lead you wrong. It will never lead you astray. And what you do is if you're living a surrendered life is you say, you know what? It doesn't matter what I believe. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter uh, what my preferences are. What matters is what I can prove by the word of God. Hold fast to those is what Paul tells Timothy. Hold fast. You grab hold of the word of God and you just hang on up because it will never lead you wrong. Verse 14, it says that good thing which was committed unto them or unto thee keep. That good thing. Do you know what the good thing that is committed unto us as Christians is? Is the gospel. It's the gospel. We are to be the hands and feet of Jesus to go out and share the gospel with a lost and a dying world. And, 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 and Paul says to Timothy, he said, hang on to the soundness of the doctrine. Then he goes on and, and he says to him, he says, you keep that good thing which was committed unto you. Keep it. Grab a hold of it. Don't veer away from it. Hang on to what the scripture says. Regardless of what popular opinion says. Regardless of uh, what's going to pack the church house. I am convinced that today uh, that we could, we could about pack out any church house if we get the right kind of hairdo and we get some pointed shoes and, and we get a smoke machine. I, I'm about convinced that that's what does it today in today's world. But I'm telling you, we're not to veer from the gospel. Last thing, last point, last expectation is you first you got a, a surrender, then you got a soundness is what God expects. But lastly, you got a suffering, a suffering, a suffering. You say, Brother John, if God's working everything together for our good, how in the world could it be in His will for us to suffer? Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. It's because it's not about you. The Christian walk is not about you. There's somebody trying to steal a car out there. Hear it? The Christian walk is not about you. It's about Him. The process of sanctification, you've heard me say this before, but I want you to hear me and hear me well this morning. The process of sanctification is Christ trying to beat the you out of you. Amen. So you look more like Him. Amen. So you act more like Him. Right. So you talk more like Him. So you walk more like Him. So you go the places where He would go. So you say the things that He would say. That is the process of sanctification. And it is God's expectation for us to live a surrendered life, a sound life, and a suffering life. So, John, I don't like that last part. I didn't ask you if you liked it or not. And you know what? Christ didn't ask me if I liked it or not when He put it in here. But this is what God expects. Look at verse 4. It says, Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. And mindful of their tears means that he's struggling, uh, that, that, that Timothy is struggling on the inside. He's got an inner struggle that is taking place day after day. I'm going to tell you something, church, that if we ever get sold out and surrendered to God, if we ever get in submission to God, if we ever go to service for God, if we, if we do these things... And 
and we're living a sound life. You know, I'm going to tell you this morning that you're going to suffer over lost and dying souls, that you're going to suffer some sleepless nights, that you're going to uh, uh, be mindful and crying uh, over, the, uh, over the souls of men. I'm telling you that we live in such a day uh, when we're worried about me, myself, and I, and nobody else. But if you start living the Christian life, the surrendered Christian life, it's not about you, yourself, and, and you. It's about worried about somebody else's soul. And with that, you're going to have some tears. With that, you're going to have some struggles. Because you're not, it's no longer about you. It's become about everybody else in serving Christ. Amen. And you're going to see, folks, and I'm going, to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go here because I'm going to tell you, I know there are folks in this room that have got family members uh, that is that is on a, in, in, in lost in addiction. They're, 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 and it has torn their family apart, and and they suffer because of it, and they they cry tears because of it, uh, because they don't want to see their family uh, go through that. They they they're suffering on account of that. You say, brother John, uh, why, how is that an example of living the Christian life? If you weren't living the Christian life, you'd just join the addiction wagon with them. Amen? Because it wouldn't be about you all of a sudden. There's others in this room that are having uh, uh, problems with their children, uh, where their children are rebelling and, and going away from God. And, and, and there's some sleepless nights and there's some suffering on account of that. And you're crying tears on your pillow uh, because you're worried about the direction your young person is going. And, and there's some suffering that goes along with that. Why? Because you're concerned about them. Why? Because you love them. Them because Christ didn't give you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of sound mind and if you're in love with somebody if you love them uh, you, then you're going to be concerned about them and it goes on just a little bit farther and, and I'm going to say this tonight or, or this morning if you don't cry, wet your pillow at night over the souls of lost folk that you go to school with uh, then you're not living a surrendered life you're not living a life in subjection to Christ if you're not wetting your pillow over the lost souls that you go to work with, you're not living a surrendered life. You're not living in subjection to Christ. I'm telling you today uh, that, that if order, uh, in order for us to meet God's expectations, that there's going to come with that some suffering, Amen. some tears, Amen. some time when you reflect. I'm telling you the hardest thing. I'm talking about the hardest thing uh, that I do as a preacher. I, 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 the hardest thing that I do is, is preach my heart out and preach to folk and, and, and folk will sit there on that pew and think, boy, he ain't preaching to me. He ain't talking to me. And they'll leave out in the same shape that they come in. And I'm telling you, that keeps me up at night. It worries me to death at night. Uh, there's some suffering that goes along uh, with living a surrendered life because I I'm going to tell you, and you may not believe this, uh, but when I walk down the aisles of this church and I look across uh, the aisles of this church, I may not know your name. I may not know your vocation. I may not know exactly where you live, uh, but I pray for you uh, because when I go to lay my head down on, at night, I see this church. I see uh, the chairs, and I know where you sit or where most of the time you sit, and I'm praying for you. Uh, you say, Brother John, you don't even know what I'm going through. I'm telling you, I don't have to know what you're going through. I know how hard this life can be. I know how it can slap you in the face. I know how it can pull the rug out from under your feet. I understand that life is tough and it's tougher when you're a Christian. Uh, but I'm telling you this morning uh, that you got a preacher that prays for you and I'm willing to suffer with Christ to do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's go a little bit farther. He said, I know you're, I'm mindful of your tears. I'm understanding that there's pain on the inside. And then in verse, verse 8 it says, in the middle part of that verse, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. The afflictions of the gospel. Well, what could that be, Brother John? You could get talked about. In other places in our world it hadn't got there yet. And it might get there some of these days. And if it does, y'all better post my bell because I'm claustrophobic and I can't stay in there long. But I'm telling you uh, that you, one of these days we may go to prison over our faith. In this country, it's happening all over the world. People are being killed. There's more martyrs today than what there's ever been in, Christ, in Christendom. Come on. 
But the worst thing we got to worry about in America is our reputation. How dare us not share the gospel? Because we're worried about what somebody might think. Really? We're worried that somebody might make fun of us. Y'all, I'm telling you, I like getting made fun of so much I make fun of myself sometimes. Come on. I mean, really, if you can't laugh at yourself and poke fun at yourself, what good are you? Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I mean, we're, we're, we're saying we're, we're not going to share the gospel because we're afraid of what somebody might think, what somebody might say. I'm going to go on. The afflictions of the gospel, they're not many in the United States. They're really not. There are not, re re they're not really many afflictions in, in the gospel in the United States, but we walk away from it anyway because we don't want any suffering to go with our Christianity. We want the blessings, but we don't want the work that goes with it. But I, I'm, I'm going to move. Verse 12 says, For which, because I also suffer these things. Paul had been shipwrecked. Paul had been beaten. Paul had been in prison. Paul had it rough. Why? Because he chose to suffer the afflictions that come with the gospel. This morning, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and, I, and I'm, we're going to give an altar call. The suffering that we serve in, in today in, in America, in the, in the state of Alabama, is not that much. Paul, Paul writes these words in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. He says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Paul says it's worth it. It's worth it to get to see one more soul get saved. It's worth it to get to see one more person hear the gospel. It's worth it. It doesn't matter. And I'm telling y'all uh, today, it doesn't matter if somebody pokes fun at you or makes fun of you. It doesn't matter if they talk about you or snicker at you. I'm telling you today uh, that it's worth it. It doesn't matter what you have to go through. I'm telling you, if they come by uh, today and they put me in prison, it'll be worth it. If I have to uh, uh, face my claustrophobia, it'll be worth it. I'm telling telling you, I, I count it an honor to suffer uh, with my Lord. I'm telling you, uh, Stephen said that he counted it an honor. He, he looked up into heaven and Jesus was standing up at the right hand of the Father ready, ready to receive him. And he said he, he counted it a privilege to die in that way. Amen. And we're worried about what somebody thinks. I will say this. I've suffered a little, but very little. I've suffered loss of friends. You believe this or not, but you preach like I preach, and there's some folk not going to like you. Amen. Some of you think it's your friend. You get loss of friends. But you know what? I got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I got somebody I can lean on. I got somebody I can call at 3 o'clock in the morning. Loss of sleep. But the peace of God which passes all understanding comes by. Loss of security. That's something that you might suffer. You say, Brother John, I don't understand what you're talking about, loss of security. <clears throat> I'm going to tell this. If y'all get in a hurry and you need to go, just go right ahead. I think I'm going to preach. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
He's a good friend of ours. And uh, he was a lineman making killer money, working on the road. God called him to preach. He surrendered. And then God told him, he said, Son, I want you to be a full-time evangelist. Amen. He said, Really? An evangelist? Come on. So he stepped out making I don't know what good <laughs> Amen. to no security whatsoever to say, hey, I am going to follow what God wants me to do. Amen. And you think, boy, that guy's an idiot. Why in the world would somebody quit a good job to be an evangelist? Can't you do that good job and be an evangelist too? No. Do you know that one first time he looked at his boss and said, Hey, listen, I've got to preach a revival uh, down in Alabama. I'm not going to be here for a week. Uh, he wouldn't have a job anyway. You say, Brother John, he lost his security as a part of suffering. For the cause of Christ, yeah. You know who he is? John Wells. We saw 29 saved in our church alone. <laughs> but you say, well, Brother John, I just don't think that God would, would call me out of my job and call, hey, look at who you're talking to. I don't think God would call me away from my job, my livelihood. I don't think he'd call me to a place of no security. I'm going to tell you what the security in John Wells, what the security in John Mays is, is we serve the one that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Amen. That's who we're serving. Amen. And, I, and, and anybody, so folks say, well, they're just preachers because they're lazy. <laughs> Real. Amen. They're doing it for the money. You out your mind. You hear what I'm saying to you? You think anybody is standing in a pulpit this morning for money when they could make ten times the money out in the secular world doing a, a normal job? Really? But that's what I, that, that goes with that suffering that people talking. Let them talk. Let them talk. Loss of sleep, loss of security. You get talked about. I, I've, I've been talked about, and it's not always good. I've been looked down on. That's not always fun. I've been made fun of. That's not always great. I've been avoided. I've been laughed at. I've been scoffed at. I've been mocked. I've been picked apart. But you know what? Still here I stand. Amen. Surrendered to him. Let them pick us apart. Let them talk about us. Do you know what they're really doing? I don't know if you know this, but it says, Blessed are men when they uh, revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. And, and, and it talks about that in Scripture. And it talks about that when you get accused falsely they're about you getting a crown uh, and, and, and you're getting jewels in your crown and all this other stuff. I told somebody one day, I said, just let them talk. I said, they don't realize it, but they're loading my wheelbarrow full of crowns. Uh, they're loading me a wagon up, up in the glory. And just let them talk. Just let them just say whatever they want to say uh, because I don't care they're loading me up my crowns when I get there and when I get there I get to cast my crowns at Jesus feet so let them load the wagon let them load it church listen this morning as we as we ask ourselves what does God expect he expects us to suffer a little bit but listen to what Jesus says in the book of John. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In this world you shall, you shall have tribulation. It doesn't say you might have. It doesn't say it's possible. It says it's coming. You shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. God expects surrender. God expects soundness. 
and God expects suffering. And I'm going to say one thing, and then we're closing. If you've got soundness in your surrender, you're going to suffer. These go interchangeable, hand in hand. You say, Brother John, I've never suffered for the cause of the gospel. I've never been talked about. Do you know why? Because you've never done nothing for the cause of the gospel. If you've never been made fun of, it, I'm telling you, it goes hand in hand. And I'll, I'll just submit to you this morning that you're not surrendered. You live in half-hearted Christianity instead of fully surrendered, submitted to Christ. If that is you this morning, when I open this altar, I'm going to invite you. And I'm going to say something to you. As, 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 as I invite you to come, I know that everybody in this place is not fully surrendered. I know that everybody in this place is not fully committed into, to the submission of Christ. I understand that everybody in this place is not sound in their faith and sound in their doctrine. I understand that everybody in this place has not suffered for the cause of Christ. But, all that being said, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to judge you. God didn't place me up here as judge. I'm not going to look down on you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to love you. And I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to pray you get it right. I'm going to pray that you get it surrendered all the way just like he expects. You say, Brother John, do you got it surrendered all the way just like he expects? He's still working on me. And thank God he is to make me what I ought to be. Amen. Y'all stand to your feet. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Go ahead and get us a song.